On to our next story here, of course, Connected. What you're about to hear is a call from a mother to her 23-year-old daughter who was at a music festival the moment that Hamas terrorists ambushed the event. Take a listen. את לא לבד, את איתי. יפה שלי. הכל טוב, אנחנו... That young woman's name is Romy Gonan. She has not been seen or heard from since then. Her mother, Merev Gonan, is joining us live now from Israel. Uh, Merev, good morning to you, and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Um, just hearing that, um, that little snippet of your phone conversation that really lasted hours with your daughter, Romy, is, is heartbreaking. Can you tell us a little bit about that encounter, that last moment that you spoke with her? Yes, it was after four and a half hours that we, we've been with her almost every minute uh, on the phone, uh, hearing her moving from place to place to try and hide first from the rockets and then from the gunfires of the terrorists. Um, the, last, the last time she called me, she said she was crying. And she said, Mommy, I was shot. They shot at us in Gaia who is her best friend, is not answering, and Ben is not answering. And Ophir is one or two. Ophir is a guy that entered the car just to run away from there. And the car was shot, and we cannot move. We cannot move. And the, the car cannot drive. And we were talking, and I was trying to suggest how we can help her and ask her for the, na for the number of the car, the place they are in, the model of the car, the color, uh, try to find out where exactly they are. And she couldn't say much because she, we heard the shooting all around them all the time until the last minutes that we heard the shooting coming closer to the car. And then a lot of uh, voices, men voices in Arabic shouting at each other. And then somebody tried to uh, start the car. And the last word she said is, hello, mommy. And then somebody closed the phone, and that's it. We never heard of her since then. It's 17 days, um, and our story is one of the of the stories uh, of the kidnapped, of the wounded, of the butchered families that were killed. It is babies, it's mothers, it's elders, it's. Uh, I cannot imagine, I cannot describe enough what happened here. It's like a, it's like genocide. They just came and butchered. Um, and my daughter is still there in the hands of these people that did those things here in Israel. It's unimaginable. It is, and it, it's unimaginable to hear that phone call just the snippet and to know that you were on the phone with her for four hours as all of this was was playing out. Um, I don't know, and I'm going to ask you how you find the strength to continue to talk, not only talk about the phone call, but you've been at rallies. You have been out there calling for the release of all the hostages. Where do you find the strength yes. to do this, especially knowing that you still don't know exactly where your daughter is? I think the first thing is the, the sense of responsibility to, towards my daughter. I couldn't help her that day. It was, uh, you know, I was helpless. I couldn't do anything. I knew we cannot send anybody there. At, at one point, we found out that it is not possible to send anybody because there were hundreds, thousands of, of terrorists around there. So I knew I couldn't help her. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a horrible feeling for a mother, the helplessness in this situation. So. Now I can do things. I can talk. I can tell everybody what happened there. I can raise the the the, the awareness of what happened and the fact that we all, as as you know, as human beings, should gather together and make sure it will not happen again uh, to anybody, not just in Israel but in other places around the world. Because this, what happened here, uh, can happen every every other place around the world.
Uh, so this is one thing. It's my responsibility as a mother. But also, I'm not alone. There are a lot of people here that gather together, a lot of beautiful people, that all we want is to make sure it, it will not happen again. It's not that we want to hurt somebody else. It's not like that. I never wanted anything of that, any of that. But now that we had this situation here, this, this, this horrible nightmare, I just can call the whole world and say, this is us against evil. It's not anything else. It's, it's exactly that. And I have four other kids. I have five kids. Romy is the third one. And I have my kids that are around me. And they are my force also, my strength. I have my, uh, my spouse with me, which helps me in this situation. And there are a lot of wonderful people here in Israel and around the world that stands with us. And we just say, don't look away. Don't look away. This is something that can happen also in other places around the world. And we have to make sure it will not happen again. And you also have the person who Romy is uh, helping you with that strength as well, I assume, um, trying to get the story yes. out there. Can you tell us a little bit about Romy for those who don't know her? Well, you saw the movie. <laughs> this is Romy. She's a dancer. She's a choreographer, a great choreographer. She's a wonderful child. She's smiley. She's shiny. She's that. She's a light. She's, she's the glue between her brothers and sisters. She's happy. She's like, you know, she's a young woman wanting to have, to live the life. She was in South America in those pictures, and she met Gaia. Gaia and her uh, went to South America together, and this is who she is. A lot of friends, a lot of, uh, of smiley, shiny, working very hard to earn more money for the next trip. She's so responsible. She's so... She's my light, one of my lights, and I need her back. And I think the whole world needs to call me, like call me, other girls, and and uh, and also, you know, it's not just Tommy, which is a young girl. It's also elderly and, and babies that are in uh, Gaza. We need those family members of ours, and and it's it, it's all about us. Mirav, thank you so much for sharing this story, sharing your light with us as well in terms of Romy. And we pray that you get good information and some good news about her whereabouts soon. Thank you very much for you. All the, the all those nets that are coming and, and bringing these stories because these stories are real. It's not something that we just tell. It is real. It's the life of real people. And Thank you very much for uh, putting it ahead and, and in front and to everybody to know that this happened to us and it can, can happen ev to everybody else. So thank you very much. Of course, Mirav Gonin again live from Israel this morning.